Hello learners, welcome back to Direction Networks. Here we are with the part 3 of Deep Dive into OSI Model. To understand this part, please go through the part 1 and part 2 of Deep Dive into OSI Model. Let us discuss about the transport layer and the functionalities of transport layer. This layer is responsible for process to process or end to end communication between the source and the destination. This layer makes sure whole message is delivered intact and in order. Transport layer provides logical communication between application programs on different hosts. The four functionalities of transport layer are port addressing, segmentation and reassembly, connection management, and data transmission control. Let us dive deep into the functionalities of the transport layer one by one. So let us understand the first functionality of the transport layer which is port addressing. Before going to port addressing let us understand what a port is. A port is a virtual point where a network connection starts or terminates. These are software based and are handled on the operating system base. Each port is associated to a specific service or a specific application process. With the help of ports, our computers are able to segregate the different kind of traffic. Like email traffic goes to a different port, web browsing traffic goes to a different port, your secure traffic goes to a different port, and your FTP traffic goes to a different port. So we can say that port addressing or the ports is the concept on the transport layer only. Both protocols TCP and UDP which work on the transport layer can only tell us which data packet is associated to which port. So we only see in these two protocol headers there is the field for the port addressing. In TCP you can see source port and destination port are of 16 bits each and similarly you can see in the UDP header both destination port and source port are of 16 bits. So in simple terminology, we can say when a machine receives a huge stream of data, only the port addressing or the ports can differentiate which data goes to which application process. Let us understand the second functionality of the transport layer which is segmentation and reassembly. As we know, once the data gets generated on the application layer, it gets generated as a continuous stream of data. And once this data message flows through the layers to the transport layer, transport layer cannot process this continuous stream of data, so it breaks this data into the segments. This process of breaking down of the data into the segments is called as segmentation. And this process of segmentation on the transport layer is done on the basis of MSS already selected through the TCP three-way handshake. And this process of segmentation is done from the sender end for a specific communication. Suppose we have 4000 bytes of data that gets generated on the application layer. And once these 4000 bytes of data reach to the transport layer, the process of segmentation will be done over this data. And suppose the connecting parties have already selected their MSS value as 1000 bytes. So these 4000 bytes of data will be broken down into four segments, each of size 1000 bytes. Once the process of segmentation is completed, each segment on transport layer is attached with a TCP header. And within this TCP header, there is a specific field called as sequence number which is given to each byte of data. And this sequencing of the data helps the receiver to reassemble the data once the reassembly is done. Now let us discuss the process of reassembly. The first thing to remember is this reassembly process is always done on the destination end. TCP reassembly is the process of reconstructing the original data stream from the receiver segments at the destination. Here we already saw the example wherein our segmentation process happened on the 4000 bytes of data. So once all these four segments of 1000 bytes of data reach to the destination, 
each segment will be having thousand sequence numbers. So that means in order these segments will be reconstructed or reattached to get the original data. Now let us understand the third functionality of transport layer which is connection management. So in connection management we manage the connections or control the connections on the transport layer. And these connections can be created through the connectionless approach or through the connection oriented approach. If you are going to use connectionless approach then we will be using the UDP protocol. And if any application protocol uses the connection oriented approach it is going to use TCP protocol for the communications. So that means on the transport layer only two protocols are used either the applications will use UDP or they will use the TCP protocol for the transportation of data. So whether an application is going to use TCP or UDP on the transport layer hugely depends on the application protocol design. Suppose we have some TCP based protocols working on the application layer like FTP, SMTP, HTTP. And similarly we have some protocols, application level protocols like DNS, TFTP, DHCP, RIP which are using UDP on the transport layer. So that means all the applications which will be using the UDP on the transport layer does not need any connection for the transportation of the data. While as the protocols which are going to use TCP on the transport layer are going to create a three-way handshake oriented connection to start the data transmission. So all the stuff related to the TCP connections or UDP connections and their data transmission mechanisms are handled by the connection management functionality of the transport layer. Let us go through the fourth functionality of transport layer which is data transmission control. This functionality handles all the techniques and mechanisms which are for error control, flow control and congestion control of the data. Now if we talk about the error control mechanism, it deals with the corrupted segments, lost segments, out of order segments and duplicate segments. So that means whenever a sender sends the data to the receiver, whatever happens in between the transmission, if any data gets scrambled or the data gets corrupted, this is all handled by the error control mechanism of the TCP. If we talk about the error control on the transport layer, we mainly use three mechanisms. The first one is error detection techniques in which we mainly use single parity check, cyclic redundancy check and the checksum. The second mechanism is sequencing and acknowledgements. And the third one is retransmission of segments. In flow control, the transport layer provides a means for the receiver to track the amount of data that a sender can send to the receiver. And basically there are set of procedures which are used to restrict the amount of data that a sender can send to the receiver. For this there are some flow control protocols which are used. And among those we have sliding window protocols like stop and wait ARQ, go back and ARQ and selective repeat ARQ. Now the congestion control on the transport layer is handled by the four algorithms. But before going through the algorithms let us see what congestion is. Congestion is a state of network where the network is very much overwhelmed with the traffic which causes the slowdown of the network response time. That means the usual response time will now be increased and your response from the other end will be delayed. Now the four algorithms which are used in the congestion control are slow start, congestion avoidance, fast retransmit and fast recovery. Here in this series we are just covering the OSI model topics. Wherever we encountered some major topics like TCP three-way handshake, congestion control, error control, we will cover these in the TCP series. Now on the other side let us meet you with the network layer.